In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes by divine providence, all the readings and the commemorations and even the political celebration and the national celebrations, they line up. So today on this day of Father's Day, we have all these commemorations and readings, and they all have a similar theme. We heard in the Gospel passage, Christ praying to his Father. He's praying to his Father, and he's he's telling his Father that he's going to give his disciple, you know, that to protect his disciples, that God gave them to him and they're his, and that they may be one as we are one. And he says something very important, which is uh, that you've sent Jesus Christ so that they may have eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And so Jesus prays to his Father. We also have in the epistle reading today from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul meeting with the elders from the church of Ephesus. And we see St. Paul in the role of a spiritual father. How he calls to them and they journey to him. He didn't go to Ephesus this time, but they come to him. And he's giving them guidance. And he's telling them how to run the church in his absence. And then he, at the end it says, and he knelt down and he prayed with them. So we see St. Paul as a spiritual father to the church of Ephesus. And then, of course, we have today's commemoration as the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council, the 318 bishops who were present and approved the decisions of the First Ecumenical Council, which were so formative for the dogmatic theology of our church, and everything that we believe today goes back to that council. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So everything is kind of revolving around this theme of, of fatherhood, both biological fatherhood and the celebration of Father's Day, but also spiritual fatherhood. It's interesting to see in the life of the church how Christ sets the example, how Christ shows his disciples the Father, how he shows them the relationship between the Father and the Son, and how this core relationship between the Father and the Son is what gives life to the church. And he shows them what obedience to the Father looks like and how the sound wisdom and will of the Father constantly guides everything for the good of Christ and his disciples in the whole world. His disciples then became fathers themselves. They went out, they preached, they baptized people, and they formed churches everywhere they went, in Asia Minor, in Ethiopia, in Africa, in Europe, they formed churches and they became the leaders of those communities. And just like a father gives life to his children biologically, these apostles gave life to those churches by baptizing these people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then they taught and passed down the knowledge that they had received from Christ himself to the next generation. And those leaders then took what they knew and what they had learned from the apostles and they passed that on to the next generation. And this is what we see St. Paul doing with the Ephesians today. Passing on the knowledge of truth, which is eternal life, which is the basis of eternal life, to the next generation of church leaders and of all Christians. And this continued down the line, down the line, till the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council and how they had received the truth from their spiritual fathers and their hierarchs and their church leaders and from the people that were important to them in their life in the church. And they had received this truth, this knowledge of God that comes not just from books and from clever arguments and from philosophy, but a knowledge of God that comes from a life of prayer, a life of worship and thanksgiving, and a life of following the commandments of God, this was how they learned who God was, even though the time had begin pa- begun passing. And so the, first, the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council set into stone the things that they had received previously, and they passed it on to the next generation, and the next generation down through the centuries to this very day and age. And so we see how important fatherhood is to the life of the church. 
how fatherhood, because of the spiritual fathers of our church, we believe what we believe, and we know what we know, and we know that it's true, because it comes not just from our minds, but it comes down to us from Christ himself through all these holy men. We call them fathers because they pass on their wisdom to us. We call them fathers because they are role models for us. We call them fathers because they care for us, and they pray for us, and they intercede for us. We call them fathers because they give us everything that we need to succeed in the spiritual life. And these, this form of fatherhood continues into the church today, in the, the clergy and the priests, and also in our hierarchs. And these fathers of the past, these generations of hierarchs and priests and theologians who have given us the truth, they are also the measuring stick of truth today. They are the ruler by which we know whether something is good or bad, whether we know something is true or false. So when you hear people talking today about the life of the church and things that are happening in the life of the church, there's only one simple question that we need to ask ourselves. Is, is, this, is this in accordance? Does this agree with the teachings and the lives of the fathers? And if the answer is yes, then we know that that thing is from God. And if the answer is no, then we know that that thing is from the devil. And we should reject it and turn away from it. It's amazing to see how this spiritual fatherhood is also reflected in the fatherhood that takes place in our families. How the father in our family lives is kind of like the key ingredient many times to the spiritual well-being of his family. And I'm not just saying this out of some kind of like an antiquated understanding of family life. There's actually research that shows that this is true. They say that the research shows that when the mother is religious and spiritual, and she goes to church and she teaches her kids, the retention rate, so to speak, of her children into adulthood, being faithful and religious, is like 50-50, maybe a little bit more than 50-50. When the father, though, is religious and spiritual, 75-80%. Okay? So who, the key, many times, not always, because every family is different and every family has different circumstances, but many times, the key is the spiritual life of the father. So now I'm going to speak to all the fathers in the room, all of you who are here in the church today. We have to take our spiritual lives very seriously. We cannot just approach the life of the church as something that's like an obligation that we have to do to fulfill a duty or out of superstition or because of X, Y, and Z. Because our children, if, we, if they see, if we are not doing these things, if we are not living our lives as Christians with a full heart, if we're doing it half-heartedly, our children perceive that. They're very perceptive of what, of what is really going on within us. And it won't stick. But if we try in our lives, if we try to the best of our abilities to live according to the, to the li life that God has laid down for us and follow his commandments and follow the teachings of the church, if we try our best to attend the worship services as much as we can, and believe me, I grew up in a restaurant family. I know that for many fathers, it's hard because of work. Okay? And we, while we can argue about that and the validity of that argument, there's still a necessity to come whenever we're able. Can't come on Sundays, come during the week. We have lots of weekday services too. And on top of that, how are we living our spiritual lives at home? Are we as fathers praying? Are we teaching our children how to pray? When somebody gets sick in the house, or when somebody gets sick in our families, do we pull our kids in front of the icon of Panagia in Christ to pray for them? Do we fast in our homes, or do we belittle the practice of fasting? Do we go to confession and teach our kids to do that, or do we belittle the practice of confession? Do we come and receive the Eucharist when we come to church, or do we say, eh, I'll come on Pascha to take Holy Communion? Because everything that we do as fathers and mothers, but today's Father's Day, so we're talking to the fathers. Everything that we do as fathers sends a message to our children. Everything that we do as fathers tells our kids what's right and what's wrong. And we can send the wrong message to them very easily if we don't approach our 
spiritual duties as fathers very intentionally and seriously. So on this day when we have so many models of fatherhood placed before us, Christ and his Father in heaven, our Father, St. Paul being a father to the church in Ephesus and the fathers of the First Ecumenical Council and bringing to mind all of the spiritual church fathers throughout time and bringing into mind all of our fathers and grandfathers and our ancestors that have gone before us. Let us honor their memory by living out our life in Christ to the best of our abilities. We are not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But we have to try. We have to give it everything that we have. Just like we give everything that we have so that we can provide for our children. Just so that, like we give everything that we have so that they can get an education. Just like we provide everything that we can so that they can make a good life and have a good family for themselves. We have to give everything that we can so that we can hand down to them the thing that matters the most. Knowing who God is and knowing Jesus Christ in our life. Because while having a good education and having a good career and having a good family will make a peaceful life on this earth, knowing who God is will give us the eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. And there's no other way that we can get that. That's it. And it starts with us. Fathers, along with the mothers and and all the parents and grandparents, we have to be the leaders and set the tone for our children. And so I hope that and pray that our God, who is our Father in heaven, will bless and enlighten all of us as fathers, both spiritual and in our families, uh, so that we can fulfill our duties. And so that when we come before the Lord on the day of judgment and he asks us what we did with our children that he gave us, we can turn to him and say, Lord, we did our best. We gave everything that we had. We gave our blood, sweat, and tears so that they could love you. Because we know that that's the only thing that matters. Amen.